As a brand, Kia is continuing to offer more electrified models, either plug-in hybrid or full electric. And the latest edition comes with the plug-in hybrid variant of the new 2022 Kia Sorento. The next generation Sorento was launched as a 2021 model, and now they're entering with a plug-in hybrid variant. It is a three-row mid-size SUV with a plug-in hybrid, and it's the feature of my latest review. This is the fourth generation of the Sorento, but it's the first time it's been offered as a plug-in hybrid. The Sorento PHEV combines a 1.6-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine with a 66.9 kilowatt electric motor that's connected to a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery. Total combined output is 261 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. The PHEV powertrain is paired with a six-speed automatic transmission that is controlled by an electronic rotary gear selector. Kia says the Sorento PHEV will get from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 8.7 seconds. With respect to electric-only range, the Sorento PHEV is projected to offer 51 kilometers of range as per Kia's Canadian public site Kia.ca and 32 miles on its American site Kia.com. As I've referenced many times before when reviewing EVs and PHEVs, Actual range will vary on a multitude of factors, and in my week of driving it at the end of November, beginning of December, I was able to see estimates of up to 48 kilometers or just under 30 miles. It does get confusing when trying to discuss fuel economy given that plug-in hybrids draw energy from more than one source in combination when driving. There are a variety of ways to post this, and it's evident with how the Canadian and US sites choose different benchmarks. In Canada, Kia is using a more commonly understood combined metric of 3 liters per 100 kilometers, which is much lower than the 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers posted for the gas only variant. Americans need to work with a combined figure of 79 mpge, which comes from fueleconomy.gov. Now, this assumes that the Sorento PHEV needs 43 kilowatt hours of electricity to go 100 miles, and then it combines it with the gas engine combined fuel economy of 34 US mpg. Confused? Well, yeah, I don't blame you. Charging up the battery using a level 2 charger will take less than 2 hours, and if you are trickle charging using a standard 110 volt outlet, you'll need a little more than 10 hours to complete the job. The Sorento PHEV is not equipped with level 3 quick charging capabilities. The Sorento PHEV does rightfully make the claim that at the moment it's the only plug-in hybrid SUV to offer three rows of seating. But given the way that Kia has spec the Sorento PHEV, I find this option to be rather problematic. Despite there being references on the Canadian Kia website that the Sorento PHEV has available seven passenger seating, all trims offered in both Canada and the US are spec with second row captain's chairs and seating for six. Given that the Sorento is a mid-sized SUV, its third row seating is very compact and tight, which means it's really only ideal for small children. Because of this, as a family vehicle, it's really only suited ideally for families of four as spec. Once you go above that number, the third row becomes a mandatory part of the vehicle setup, and if that third row occupant is in, say, like under 10 years of age, it becomes very uncomfortable back there. Furthermore, needing the third row for passengers greatly minimizes the amount of cargo space available. With third row seating down, there's a very respectable 45 cubic feet of cargo space and more than enough for trips with a family of four. With the third row seating up, it drops dramatically to only 12.6 cubic feet. And while you can drop only half the third row down, whoever sits back there is going to be sitting beside luggage or other items that would go back there because there simply isn't much room behind the third row. To my mind, Kia's decision to only offer the PHEV as a six-seater greatly limits its sales potential, and I think this is a poorly planned product decision. I'm okay with second row captain's chairs so long as there's also an option to have a second row bench seating for three, but this isn't the case with the Sorento. Now, for the record, this is also a problem I have with the gas-only version of the Sorento, as all but the base trims in both countries come with six seats. The cynic in me suggests that this is intentionally done to lure buyers to the larger and more expensive Telluride, but since there isn't a Telluride PHEV, or at least not yet, they really are shooting themselves in the foot here and limiting the potential of the PHEV as well as the Sorento Hybrid overall. 
It's one thing to tell people about the 143.8 cubic feet of total passenger volume inside the Sorento PHEV, but without proper context, it's a number that can also be somewhat deceptive. If the Sorento does meet your needs, government rebates on both sides of the border are available. Canadian buyers can access a federal rebate of only $2,500 when purchasing the Sorento PHEV as the battery sits below the necessary 15 kilowatt hour threshold to qualify for the full $5,000. Now, there are also provincial rebates available in five provinces, ranging anywhere from $1,500 up to $4,000, which can be combined with the federal incentive. U.S. buyers are eligible for the $6,587 federal tax credit and for various state incentives, including single rider carpooling access in California. Help. I guess the best way to summarize my uh, final thoughts on this 2022 Kia Sorento PHEV is that it's good, but I, I like the look of the new Sorento. Last year's model uh, has uh, transferred over really well with the PHEV. And, and as for a PHEV, it has a decent amount of EV only range and great fuel economy overall. It looks good inside, it's modern, but I'm still hung up on the way that Kia has specced this Sorento as a six seater and not making it a seven seater with three, a bench seat for three in the middle instead of only captain's chairs. It just limits the functionality and really narrows who this vehicle is ideally suited for. In my case, it just wouldn't work. My family needs don't make this a practical vehicle, although it might had there been a, uh, a third row bench instead of the captain's chairs. So I guess that's really the choice for you. If you're looking for something, if you're only a family of four, if uh, maybe you're uh, smaller than that and you want something that's mid-sized with the occasional ability to expand to six passengers, hey, this is pretty good, especially if you're looking at a PHEV. But if you need more space and more flexibility, you're either gonna have to think larger, such as a Telluride, although it, because that doesn't have uh, any hybrid or plug-in, you're limiting your fuel efficiency, or you may have to look to another brand. Those are my feelings, and that's it for this review. If you like it and you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to indicate you wanna receive notifications every time a new vehicle is uploaded. That's all for now, though. I'm Eric Novak. Thanks for watching. There's plenty of ways for you to keep connected with me, so check out some of my social media links, suggested videos, and you know I'd really love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel.